Good morning everybody, it's Reverend Janet here with our thought for the day for Saturday. These weeks of being locked down and not being able to meet together has made us all have to learn a new way of doing things and next week is going to be a first for me because next week I'm going to conduct an interview at the local preachers meeting but we're going to be doing it over Zoom, over the computer. And there's definitely a first for us all, a local preachers meeting without any of us having to leave our own living rooms. And the reason that we're doing that interview is because someone is about to be moved from being a preacher on trial to being admitted to a preacher on full plan. And in order for that to happen, we have to conduct an interview with them and they have to read one of John Wesley's 44 sermons and answer questions on it. And I have to be honest and admit that it's not a part of local preacher training that any of us particularly look forward to. But if we want to be a local preacher, we have to do it. I know that in times gone by, and perhaps even today, there was a rule in the Methodist Church that every chapel had to have a copy of John Wesley's 44 sermons in the vestry drawer and that if the planned preacher didn't turn up for any reason, the senior steward would have to read one of those 44 sermons of John Wesley during the service. And I'm quite sure it was a prospect that no one particularly relished because we imagine that John Wesley's sermons must be very long and very dull and very boring and probably difficult to understand. But you know, we'd be wrong if that's what we think. If we actually read what John Wesley wrote and preached, we find that the language that he used is actually quite simple. The reason for that is that the first person to hear his sermons was his kitchen maid, who was called Betsy. And he would write a sermon and then he would preach it to Betsy. And if there was anything there that she didn't understand, he would take it away and write it again and then preach it again until she did understand every word. He was very very forward looking and he was regarded as completely eccentric by the other vicars of his time. His language was accessible, his thinking was modern. His advice on how we should live our lives, manage your money well, try not to get into debt, get plenty of exercise, lots of fresh air, eat lots of vegetables. It's all very good advice, although I don't agree with what John Wesley said about the dangers of drinking tea. He rode a quarter of a million miles on horseback. He wrote and preached 40,000 of those sermons. And after more than 50 years of travelling the country, preaching the good news of Jesus, he died at the age of 88. And his last words were these, best of all is God is with us. Those words summed up his whole life, his work, all his preaching, all his writing. The best thing of all, no matter who we are or what we do, no matter what we are living through or struggling with, the best thing of all is that God is with us. A fantastically clever professor of theology once said, faith becomes simpler as you become older. Faith becomes simpler as you become older. I wonder whether you are finding that to be true. 
There's a story about the great German theologian Karl Barth, who was in his 80s when he was asked, can you sum up all your knowledge and learning? What is the essence of all your writing? He had written thousands of books. He had written a whole encyclopedia about Christianity. His answer was, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. All those clever and wise people, writers and teachers and preachers, they put down their books. They step away from their pulpits and they tell us of the deepest and simplest truth of all. God loves us and God is with us. Not with some boring, old-fashioned and long sermon that sends us off to sleep, but with truth and comfort and a blessing for us today. God loves us. God is with us. And this is the best thing of all. The Methodist hymn writer Andrew Pratt took those words of John Wesley and wrote a hymn. It's number 610 in Singing the Faith, if you want to look it up. And the first verse goes, Best of all is God is with us. God will hold and never fail. Keep that truth when storms are raging. God remains, though faith is frail. couple of verses from the book of Zephaniah. Your Lord is King of Israel and stands at your side. You do not have to worry about any more troubles. The time is coming when it will be said to you, do not be discouraged or grow weak from fear. The Lord your God wins victory over victory and is always with you. He celebrates and sings because of you and he will refresh your life with his love. Thanks be to God. The Lord our God is always with us. As one day gives way to another, as the week and months and years pass by. Let that very simple truth be the thing that remains, no matter what. The best of all is God is with us. Let us pray. Lord, as I come before you and dwell in your presence, will you show me what you want me to see? Will you let me hear what you are speaking over me? Will you teach me how to remain in the secret place of your presence? Will you guide me and remind me and teach me how to live in this place of your holy presence. Lord, will you remind me constantly to keep my eyes upon you? Will you give me reminders that you are here with me, that you are before and behind me, always surrounding me, always near? and always here. Lord, today, tomorrow, and every day, keep me in constant awareness of you with me. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. Until we meet again. Amen.